Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm outside because it's like 60 degrees out and it is beautiful. Um, I'm probably going to look like I'm squinting a lot because I didn't bring sunglasses, but oh, it was just too nice outside to not be out here. Um, I had a productive morning so far. I actually went to uh, Aldi, my old job, to turn in some stuff and sign a paper or whatever. And it was actually a really good experience. Like, I was actually quite nervous to go in there because I felt, I don't know, I guess I felt dumb <laughs> and afraid of what they might say or if I'd be judged or whatever. But I just felt very welcomed when I went back in there. Um, the manager that's there is just phenomenal. Like, the people that work there are really awesome. So I'm grateful, even if I worked there for a few days, um, that the people that I was working with were so great. That was a huge plus. So I felt really good actually walking out of there. Like a whole different vibration than when I was walking in. So I'm glad that's all taken care of. I feel like there's closure there now where I can move on to the next step, whatever that might be. Um, I don't know what it is yet, but we'll find out. I'm open to figuring it out. Um, what else? The detox has been kind of off course the last couple of days, to be honest. Um, last night, me and my mom made this really awesome vegan pizza together, and I had, like, half of it with her. Um, it wasn't, like, horrible for you by any means, but it's just not, like, the deep cleanse that I've been hoping for the past few days. But if you guys want to make a vegan pizza, like, let me just tell you real quick. This crust was insane. Um, Megan Elizabeth, who has a channel on YouTube, put this up, and I was just like, there's no way something this simple can be so good but it was incredible. Um, basically, you just put one cup of dry quinoa into a blender with one cup of water, and you blend it, and you get like this pasty pancake battery type consistency, right? Pour it onto um, parchment paper lined pan, and then you just pour the stuff on, and you shape it to whatever pizza crust that you want or whatever. And then you pre-bake it at 425 for 15 minutes. Take it out, flip it over, and put all your sauce and toppings on the flipped side and then bake it for another 15 minutes and it's like phenomenal. It's a thin crust pizza by the way, so make sure you spread it thin for it to cook properly, but like I was amazed. That like forever changed pizza for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously that's not sprouts or green juice or whatever, so <laughs> not that I'm like um, what's the word, like devastated or anything. Like it was delicious and I'm glad I had it and now I know to make that again in the future at a later time. But it's just, like I said, not exactly where I hoped I would be, but that's okay because you shoot for like the stars and you land where you land and you enjoy the journey along the way. So that's what I'm aiming for. Um, I don't know what today is gonna hold yet. Uh, I'm thinking I wanna get like one of those book reviews in that I was talking about yesterday because I'm just really passionate about one of them. And that's really it. I'm just really enjoying the beautiful day. Um, it's It feels like almost like a, sp a summer day out here today. It's really strange, but I'm very grateful for it. So I'm just going to walk around, get a little bit of exercise, and then we'll see where the rest of the day goes. Hi guys, you ready to talk about the first book? Um, this is a book I've just read relatively recently, um, twice actually, probably twice within the last few months. And it's just been like a good source of inspiration for me. It's called The Modern Muse by Giselle Coy. Can you see it? <clears throat> it is The Modern Muse, How to Create the Ravishing Life You've Always Wanted. And I find that this is a really good book for people that are feeling a little lost, a little stuck, not entirely knowing what it is they want to do, or to find that like initial nudge to get yourself on the path. Um, it also goes into a lot of like mm, different concepts that I think are really, really awesome. So I wrote some notes down as I was rereading this book, and I just want to share some things with you guys, like some highlights of it that I thought were really, really awesome. And not to like give the whole book away or anything like that, but just some things that I thought were interesting, whether it be like actual concepts, terminology, or just some like actual quotes I wrote down from the book. So um, you're gonna see me looking down a lot because I wrote them down, but yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. So the first thing she mentions um, is a concept called dimensional sliding, which I thought was really interesting. Um, it's basically 
a scale that you find yourself on that ranges either from like the mundane to more conscious transcendental type thinking so it's like either earthly stuff or heavenly stuff kind of in a sense and a thing that she says about it is when we're in alignment we are afforded a viewpoint along any section of that scale from the earthly to the heavenly so um, it's kind of like saying when you're in alignment you're either seeing something like straightforward for what it is like oh look at that beautiful sunset in the colors or maybe you're looking at it from a whole different perspective and that has like some other kind of synchronistic meaning to you or let's say it's a person and you just see like how beautiful someone's hair is. Maybe you're on the other side of the scale looking at like, wow, this person's such an old soul that came here with such a divine purpose. So it's just basically talking about like different levels of being in alignment, how to recognize it and like what forms they can take on. So being in alignment isn't always like, oh my God, 1111, angel numbers. Um, things like that, you know what I mean? You could still be in alignment and also be just appreciating how simple and mundane a building is. Um, so that's a pretty cool concept that I really like. Um, another one that she talks about is called the vibrational diet, which I'm so into. I think this is such a great thing to talk about. Um, I'm just going to basically read what I wrote down. The vibrational diet consists of everything you are exposed to on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, including food, people, sounds, weather, internal thoughts, and relationships. Basically, a quick survey of the toxic versus harmonious levels in your life. What is contributing joy, ease, and happiness versus what is contributing suffering? So basically... Um, it's writing down the different things that consist in your life that are either promoting joy or your best good or something that's causing you suffering. And you literally like whittle it down to all the different little elements that go into your life and um, the vibration that those are contributing to your life. So I think that's really cool. I think it'd be cool to have like some kind of outline or some kind of chart or something where you can go and fill them out and then basically kind of use that chart to evaluate things in your life and then just make choices that'll make you feel better or make you happier or, you know, more at ease in your life. So I think that's super cool and worth um, thinking about. And then just some different quotes and stuff like, one way to improve your vibrational diet, there's a mantra here that says, Today, I make my life sacred again, and I really, really love that one. It sounds so powerful to me, and I think that's really inspirational sounding. Um, another good quote is, no one in a body escapes the human experience. <laughs> so basically, if you are a human in a human body, you're going through similar things as all the other humans. There's no one that's like transcended humanity that's walking in a body, essentially, so... Even the most like enlightened masters are still experiencing negative emotions in their body. It's just how are they reacting to them? Um, they're still being felt and things like that. I'm sure there's other things that go into it as well, but it makes you feel better when you realize that we're all on the same boat together. So I really like that. Um, oh, there's a concept about a joy-based economy as opposed to the economy that we're accustomed to where the new currency is happiness and feeling good. I love that. <laughs> um, another good quote is, what is next beyond my wildest imagination? And I think that just invites like such an openness to your life of things like showing up to you in ways that you'd never expect. So when you're like really open to that and expecting things to come in such like a ravishing way, then that's what you're going to experience. And then you're not like putting limitations or restrictions on things you want to have happen or show up for you in your life. So I think that's a really cool way to put it. Um, oh, this is really good. This is actually an Albert Einstein quote that she mentioned that I thought was just brilliant. I've heard it before, but it didn't really strike me until I read the book. Imagination is just a preview for life's coming attractions. So good. We have the power of imagination and visualization for a reason because we're basically... Um, brainstorming what it is we want to experience in our realities by doing it. So it's essentially like the previews of going to a movie. <laughs> um, 
I am not looking for a job. I'm looking for a role in life. I like that. Stewing in our isness is to be in the divine flow. So basically being present. Um, and yeah, she talks about musing. So obviously the book is titled The Modern Muse. So what does muse mean to you? To me, a muse is something that's like a source of inspiration that like brings out your creativity and basically causes you to feel inspired, right? So she talks a lot about that because she considers herself to be a muse and does that um, for a living and offers that as a service. So musing is the alignment of what she calls um, CDP, which stands for creati creativity, desire, and purpose. So she says musing is bringing those three things into alignment, creativity, desire, and purpose. Um, another thing is about relaxing. When you relax, your vibration shifts to one of trusting. Um, patience versus restlessness and how those two things are different from each other, um, which is basically being able to accept a difficult situation without giving a deadline to remove it. So basically another way of saying like to not be in resistance to what is. Um, and then as far as like being able to live your purpose, all that's required for you is just to show up and be yourself. You shouldn't have to exert all of your energy in such a way that you feel depleted. You should just be able to be yourself living your purpose and that's enough. And I love that. I love the sound of that. It feels like a lot of pressure gets taken off when you live according to that. Um, and then the last part I wrote down is basically just focus on the now screen. So basically you can't view the past or the future you can only look right now at what's happening in the exact moment. So just another reminder that now is the only moment we have and to make the most of it and not to postpone your happiness for a future date. What can you do right now that makes you feel good and happy? And I think that's super awesome. So I think this book is super inspirational. I always feel in such a good place after I'm reading a chapter or two of it. Highly recommend that you check it out. Um, I believe there's an ebook version or a Kindle version on Amazon as well as the physical copy of the book. Um, Giselle also has her own website. Um, I'll put a link right here, GiselleKoy.com, where she offers like musing services. I know she has a really cool service for um, inspiring, um, inspiring, is that the word? For people that want to write a book, <laughs> for people that want to be an author. She has a service called Book Birthing which I think is super cool, super cool. Can't even talk anymore. Um, and also she is, I think like the head or just very involved in what's called the Conscious Media Festival, which is starting uh, its first annual run. It's gonna be on March 3rd to the 5th in Austin, Texas, where conscious media creators are all getting together for um, a convention basically. I think that's super great. So if you're in the Austin, Texas area, go to ConsciousMediaFestival.com ConsciousMediaFestival .com and check that out. Um, as far as me, I need to go get some water to drink because I can't speak any longer. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this book review. Let me know if you've read it or if you do read it. And if you like doing... Um, this book review, let me know. I'll keep doing things like this because I got a few books I read recently that I'd love to talk to you guys about. But yeah, so I hope you enjoy and have a good rest of your day slash night. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.